Hi guys, let's discuss current affairs and this week uh, we'll get on with what we mentioned last week. Uh, um, last week I had told you that uh, in this session I'll start the discussion, uh, the weekly discussion with uh, a short talk on apartheid. That um, topic had come in because of two reasons. Um, one, um, there was a request from uh, one of you as uh, in the form of a comment on our YouTube channel and I would want you to subscribe to our Time for Bank Exams YouTube channel. Also subscribe to the social media handles of our, you know, app, uh, um, you know, uh, something here. Uh, the second reason is that um, last week there was a question on, um, you know, uh, Davis Cup and all that stuff. There was a question on Leander Pace and um, I had told you uh, that... Um, you know, in 1974, India had made it to um, India had made it to the Davis Cup World Group final. But at the time, Vijay Amritraj, who was a part of the Indian cricket, Indian tennis team, you know, had uh, refused to play. The India as a country refused to play South Africa in the final of the Davis Cup World Group. Uh, now, why did we, you know, why didn't we? play the final against South Africa because uh, South Africa at the time had a policy called apartheid. I'm going to bring to you a 10 minute talk on apartheid. This is pretty important, um, you know, especially in light of what's happening around the world in the kinds of discriminatory policies uh, against blacks and you know, other colored people, you know, um, in different parts of the world. So let me bring to you a short talk on apartheid. And as is the case, so we always have a 15 to 20, 10 to 20 minute talk on a general a topic of general interest before we go on to discuss, uh, you know, uh, with the weekly stuff current, uh, no, on current affairs. Here's the first question, first part. This is apartheid. Now, uh, apartheid is the title here. Of course, what was it about? Let me bring to you a photograph that I put here. You see this, you know, uh, this photograph is a sign on a beach in Durban. Durban, as you know, is a city in um, South Africa, and South Africa, as at the you know bottom of the African continent. Uh, if I just take it like I'm, not, this is a rough figure. Okay, this is how this is South Africa. This is South Africa. Uh, South Africa, my friends, would be about twelve point twelve. 2-1 lakh square kilometer big. It's quite a large country in terms of population and everything, uh, in terms of uh, area as well. So 12.21 lakh square kilometers. Population was also, it's a pretty populated one. I don't want to get into the small details, but this will give you an idea of how large the country is. Uh, that's one third, you know, a little over one third of India's area. So uh, coming to, you know, uh, South Africa, there was this policy of apartheid. Let me use white here because white is a little more amenable to reading. Now, this is uh, in English language. This here is in uh, what is called Afrikaans Bhasha. Afrikaans, I'll explain to you what does this mean. Afrikaans and this is in Zulu. Because this was, um, this sign was put on a beach uh, in Durban, which is a part of the Zulu province. Uh, okay. Uh, so the Zulu language here, this is basically a tribal language. Now, let me take up to take you to Afrikaans. Afrikaans is the term or, uh, you know, language spoken, um, term used to describe the white minority uh, people in uh, Af South Africa. You could also use it to describe the language they spoke. Afrikaans is Afrikaner. It's an African Basha word. So, which effectively means... You know, this is related to South African white minorities. Now, this is in English. What does it tell you? Uh, it could be difficult for, uh, you know, for you to read this fine print, but let me read it for you. Under Section 37 of the Durban Beach Bylaws, this bathing area is reserved for the sole use of the members of the white race group. There we go. Only whites. Only whites were allowed to come to this beach, to use this beach, uh, to use, uh, you know, to, to, to swim in the waters of the, you know, uh, of this place. Uh, um, so if you see this word apartheid, this is a word from the Afrikaans Basha, which means apartness. It means apartness, that is separateness. Ladies and gentlemen, apartheid, 
Now, let me bring to you another term for you, another uh, you know, picture for you. Now, I have covered this because these are languages we don't understand. Okay, so here, uh, let me bring to you this for use by white persons only. This was somewhere else. These public premises and the amenities thereof have been reserved for the exclusive use of white persons. So, white race group, white persons. So, this was only for whites. So, what was this policy of apartheid, which you mentioned is um, an Afrikaans bhasha word for, you know, meaning apartness, apartness or aparthood, that is separateness. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the policy of, I put everything here, this was a policy of white, you know, uh, white, the white minority government to racially segregate themselves against blacks, Indians and colored people. Okay. Now, racial segregation, that is the whites here, who were the descendants of the, you know, of Britain, uh, the British people, the, the Belginese, most importantly, the people of the you know, Netherlands, the Dutch. So, these guys believe that they are the chosen people to lord over this place, to, to, to rule this place. And even though majority South Africa and what we today call Namibia, in those days it was called Southwest Africa. South Africa and Southwest Africa were all ruled by white minorities. See the population today. The population today is 7.3%. Think of in those days, it was, would have been much smaller. Okay. Um, so, even if you take the same numbers, it hardly would uh, any change anything, you know. 7.3%, a little over 7% of people instituted a simple policy of apartheid. While I use the word simple, they said, well, this is a policy. But it is not, it's not always that simple, my friends. This policy racially segregated the whites and the non-whites. The whites said, we are meant to rule. We are supreme. We are, we are a more, we are a superior racial group. Uh, they said blacks, Indians and colored people who were colored. Colored could have been anyone who has come from Indonesia, people of different ancestry, not Indians, not blacks. You know, they could be local tribal, uh, um, you know, Hosha, you know, Bantu and all the descendants of those tribes basically. So, um, these three was treated as non-whites. These three were treated as non-whites. This policy of racial segregation manifested in different ways. Hospitals, parks, beaches, clubs, cinemas, hotels, restaurants, transportation means like railways, buses, were all racially segregated, meaning that there were only white places, there were only white, whites only buses, whites only cinema halls, meaning these members, non-whites, blacks, Indians, colored people were not allowed into those places. On this beach, a non-white would not be allowed. You got this now? So this policy was started in 1948. 1948. This kind of policy continued for a long time in modern times. See, look, we became independent in 1947. So, this policy started in 48, a year after our independence from the British. And this went on till 1990. During this time, the world community, that is the international community, as it is sometimes called, did a lot to help the non-whites, but that was not enough. Uh, what was that lot they did? Well, they boycotted South Africa. Countries refused to have anything to do with the white minority ruled South Africa. They said, nothing doing. We don't want to play cricket with you. We don't want to play rugby with you. We don't want to play tennis with you or for the matter any other sport. We don't want to have diplomatic relations with you. So Taiwan had relations. You know that South Korea had relations, but India refused to have relations with, you know, South Africa during this period. Okay. Now, let me take you further on this. You know, there are small facets that would be very 
that would make life that much more difficult for the blacks. Like, for example, blacks, you know, would not be able to buy hard liquor. Blacks were not allowed to buy hard liquor like whiskey, rum and all. They were allowed to buy only cheap, low-quality beer that was manufactured by the whites. I'm not kidding. This is hard, you know, it's a hard truth. This actually tells you that the whites greatly discriminated against the blacks more than they discriminated against Indians and other colored people. Yes. In the list of discrimination, the blacks were the highest, most discriminated, and then came Indians and then colored people. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, there were restaurants which were not open to blacks and others. Others means non-whites. But one more thing here. Black staff could be admitted. That is, they could be they could work as staff, cleaners, stewards, and all that. But beyond that, they were not allowed to dine in as guests. Okay. Um, there were hospitals for whites only, where no black could, could work. Okay. I mean, there were buses. This was the case in America till 1960s. Do you know that? In America, there were whites only buses. Blacks were not allowed to get onto buses. Please find out these policy about these policies in America till the 1960s, late 1960s or mid 1960s. So you you know it it will be very easy for us to say that look this kind of discrimination is bad, but it was happening in large parts of the world, my friends. Even today, there is a great deal of discrimination against blacks in America. Well, that's a topic for another day, but for now, this is it. Now, it was against this policy of racial segregation, this policy of apartheid, that Nelson Mandela fought. Nelson Mandela, as a, you know, as a teenager and as a young man, fought against this policy. Not freedom and everything like, you know, our, you know, our freedom fighters like, you know, uh, Rajagopalachari, Bhagat Singh, Gandhi and all these people fought. Nelson Mandela fought against this system of racial segregation called apartheid, you know. In 1964, he was jailed when he was fighting this and he used non-violent means. He was a boxer also. In 1964, he was jailed and for nearly 27 years, he was imprisoned because he fought against the racial segregation policy of apartheid. Okay. And remember one thing, this was a non-violent struggle by Mandela. Okay. So after Mandela was, you know, uh, released and the South African government dismantled, did away with the policy of apartheid in 1990, only then South Africa was accepted into the international community. Okay. So this is... Um, you know, uh, this is in a nutshell, of course, this is one of my favorite areas, um, especially I would list a lot of things uh, in terms of discrimination and everything, but you could always read a little more on your own. So, simply put, apartheid is an Afrikaans bhasha word meaning racial segregation or apartness. This is a policy of deliberate racial segregation by the white minority government against blacks, Indians and other, other colored people. Okay, see, um, in Pakistan, there was this uh, club in Karachi where there was a board which said Indians, women and dogs not allowed beyond this point. Can you believe that? What I said is right. Indians, women and dogs not allowed beyond this point. See, this kind of discrimination is there. It's an ugly fact of life. Okay. Why don't you read a bit, read up a, a bit more than my talk, listening to just my talk? I would want you to read. Pick a topic like apartheid or racial discrimination. Read it for 15 minutes. You understand some part, you don't understand some part, you remember some part, you don't understand, you don't remember some part. But at the end of those 15 minutes, you would have got some basic idea and you would be able to recall a few things. That's all that matters, my friends. You build on that next day, a little more the day after. So on a daily consistent basis, you should learn. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, that's a little about apartheid. I hope you learned a few things here. Uh, 
you know, there's a lot maybe we could have discussed, but then we don't have much time, my friends, isn't it? So I just wanted to, today I picked, um, last week I picked a fiscal deficit, dangers of fiscal deficit, and this week we have picked a apartheid. Maybe next week I'll pick some king or someone. I'll tell you the story of a king as was, the, you know, one of our friends um, had requested in one of our feedback emails. So let's get on with the business. Who's this smiling fellow? This guy is smiling, but the people of this country, his country are not smiling. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Nicolas Maduro. Nicolas Maduro is the president, has been re-elected the president of Venezuela. As you know, Venezuela is a country in South, South America. You know, I didn't want to have, a, you know, I didn't want to have a, a map today. For a change, I thought, okay, let's not have a map. Okay, so this is where you would find Venezuela. Okay, Venezuela, Brazil, there are three tiny countries here. Um, Suriname, British Guyana, French Guyana, then there is Colombia. This is Panama where it connects with South America, sorry, North America. So Venezuela is a kind of country that you should learn a lot about. Maybe in the next class, I'll discuss a bit about Venezuela. Yeah, shall I discuss Venezuela next week? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll bring to you how evil are the, were the, are the policies of this man and, you know, his predecessor. Just, um, you know, it would help to suffice, um, uh, you know, it would help you if you know that um, this man is a dictator. He's a dictator. He has destroyed Venezuela. Ladies and gentlemen, Venezuela has the largest petroleum reserves in the world. You heard it right. The largest petroleum reserves in the world, yet 82% of the country's population lives below poverty line. What I said is 100% right. 82% of the country's population lives below poverty line, even while it is sitting on the largest petroleum reserves in the world. Yeah, Maybe I'll give you a little more dope on Venezuela in the next class. But, you know, because that's going to take a little more time, because we already spent some time on apartheid. Um, the capital here is Caracas. What is it? Caracas. This is the capital. Coming to Chile, the capital is Santiago. And uh, the president is Gabriel Boric. Gabriel Boric. B O R I C. Boric. Peru. Peru is run from a place called Lima. This is the capital and run by the president Dina. Dina Buluarte. You may find an L here as a O, sorry, um, U-O, Buluarte. Uh, Argentina. Argentina's capital is Buenos Aires. So in each place, we mention the capital first. And then we went to discuss uh, the name of the president. Javier, the J is pronounced with an H. Javier Mili. Javier Mili. So that's about it, my friends. Uh, let's get on with the business. And you know what? All these countries, in all these countries, the main language spoken is Spanish. Sorry, except for Brazil. The other countries have Spanish as the main language because they were all part of the Spanish Empire. Coming to Brazil, they were uh, ruled by Portugal and the main language spoken here is Portuguese. Okay, so let's uh, go to the next one. This is a question about um, a military exercise um, you know, uh, involving India and uh, which country? Mongolia. The multinational military exercise, conquest, conducted in, uh, in the last week of July to the second week of August at Ulaanbaatar, was connected to Ulaanbaatar, um, which is the capital of Mongolia. This is Mongolia. You see, this is squeezed between China here and Russia. China and Russia. Okay, uh, this is a pretty large country. Uh, this country has a total area of 15 lakh square kilometers, 15.3 lakh square kilometers. Okay. And the population is just about 33.5 lakh. You heard it right. Yeah. So take 34 lakh. 34 lakh is the population. Ladies and gentlemen, that makes Mongolia 
the most sparsely populated country in the world, the country with the least density of population. It also is true, you know, that Mongolia is the second most, uh, second biggest landlocked country in the world. What's a landlocked country? A landlocked country is one that does not have access to the sea. So, which is the largest landlocked country? This sea is Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan has an area of a little over 27 lakh square kilometers. And this is Mongolia. Next to it, on its east, uh, 15, a little over 15 lakh square kilometers. So, two largest landlocked countries here. Got the idea? Yeah. So, I guess that's about it. Mm, yeah. See, there are two countries um, which um, I think this is enough for this. Yeah. Why don't you look at the places here? Uh, this is Tajikistan. What's the capital here? Dushanbe. Let's stick to capitals because these are all places that you would find very difficult to remember the leaders of. Dushanbe is a capital of Tajikistan. Uzbekistan. This is Uzbekistan. Tashkent. Let me use red here. Yeah, Tashkent. Okay. From Tashkent, let's go to Kazakhstan. Pretty large country. Astana. A-S-T-A-N-A. -A, Astana. Turkmenistan. This is the country here in green. Okay. Uh, Ashkabad. What is this? Ashkabad. In fact, I did not even think about discussing the names of the capitals. I was fo more focused on, okay, let me give them, my students, uh, a, a, a trip of these countries and with their leaders. Like, for example, the leader of Turkmenistan is Serdar Berdi Muhammadov. What's the name? Serdar Berdi Muhammadov. That's about it. Don't worry too much about it. Okay. He's a dictator. His father was a guy called Gurbanguly Berdi Muhammadov. Mega dictator. Before him was there, there was another dictator. Saparamurath Niyajav. All dictators, man. Yeah. Crazy countries. World Nature Conservation Day is observed on 28th July every year. And it is the name says World Nature Conservation Day. I'm not going to discuss this. What's, what's the theme for this year? What's the theme for this year? Connecting people and plants. Exploring digital innovation in uh, wildlife conservation. Ladies and gentlemen, self-explanatory as this is, I am not going to spend time here. Who is the new chairman and managing director of the SIDB? Small Industries Development Bank of India. This is Manoj Mittal. Manoj Mittal succeeds Siva Subramanyam Raman, the outgoing chairman and managing director of SIDB. SIDB is headquartered in Lucknow. Where is it headquartered? Lucknow. Okay. So, incoming... CMD, outgoing CMD, head office of SIDB. Um, Shaji KV is the chairman of NABAD. Chairman of NABAD. Harsha Bangri. She is the MD of Exim Bank of India. Exim Bank of India. Debashish Panda. IRDAI or IRDA. Insurance and Regulatory Sorry, Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. Let me repeat. Insurance Regulatory and uh, Development Authority of India. I guess we covered everything here. What does SIDBI do? It lends money to small, medium and uh, micro enterprises. Medium, small and medium, uh, micro enterprises. MSMEs. Fair. Ultra Tech Cement, one of India's largest, probably the largest cement company in India, is buying an additional 30 to a little under 33 percent stake uh, in India Cements for a little under 4,000 crore. Ultra Tech is owned by Aditya Birla Group. Aditya Birla Group. Aditya Birla Group is headed by is headed by Kumar Mangalam Birla. Kumar Mangalam Birla, an MBA and a chartered accountant, MBA from London Business School. Kumar Mangalam Birla, you know this company, Grasim, Hindalco, you know brands like um, uh, Pantaloons, you have, uh, what is it, Alan Solly, uh, Van Hoosen, 
Peter England. They are all owned by Aditya Birla Group. There is a company called Philips Carbon. So these are these are mega companies, my friends, and they are all part of the sixty-five billion dollar Aditya Birla Group, run by Kumar Mangalam Birla. Okay, Reliance Industries. The CMD is um, Mukesh Dhirubhai Ambani. Mukesh Dhirubhai Ambani. Adani Group. is run by gautam adani gautam adani they recently bought penna cements just remember this so while ultra tech cement has purchased india cements adani group recently you know last year last year i think they acquired ambuja cements ambuja cements now ambuja cements later um, so after ambuja cements they have acquired penna cements penna cements what about tata group they are not into um, cement and all um tata group is run by let me clear this run by natarajan chandrashekharan natarajan chandrashekharan chairman C, chairman of tata group is natarajan chandrashekharan dlf it's a real estate company construction and company delhi delhi land and finance company delhi land and finance companies okay and it's run by devinder singh devinder singh it's india's largest um, real estate company in terms of land bank and the amount of land it owns which country won its maiden t20 asia cup t20 is 2020 asia cup and it was won by sri lanka uh, hosted uh, sorry it was won by sri lanka and uh, india was runner up india was runner up the player of the series was a sri lankan cricketer named chamari atpatpadu the spelling i am writing is right okay this is the right spelling it sounds very weird but that's how it is it's a name she won the player of the series award okay i guess uh, there's hardly anything to discuss it's matter of fact kind of thing how many new sites were added to the unesco's world heritage list during the 42nd uh, world heritage committee in new delhi a committee session in new delhi 24 what is it 24 one came from india and what are the, like we discussed last class in the last class we discussed that there was this burial mounds in assam they belong to the thai ahom dynasty and they was called moidam what is it moidam or moidams moidam burial mound is the only entry from india i think the only entry and by the way unesco is run from paris it's run from paris it's a un specialized agency uh, united nations education scientific and cultural organization and it's run by audrey azule audrey azule that's the secretary general's name she's from france she's from france Oh, Rigoberta Menchu of uh, Guatemala was honored with the 2020 Gandhi Mandela Award. This is Guatemala. You see in pink here. This is Guatemala. Where she received the 1992 Nobel Peace Prize uh, for promoting, for fighting uh, for the indigenous, as uh, so the rights of indigenous people of Guatemala. The rights of indigenous people the natives not those who had come from europe and all because see historically uh, like the i mentioned south america except brazil the whole of south america was more or less ruled by spain similarly uh, this part of the world also was ruled by spain in fact mexico this mexico um, you know guatemala this entire area was ruled by spain this is a part of spanish empire panama Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, you know, you have uh, El Salvador, Guatemala, Belize, uh, all are Spanish speaking countries. Okay. So the Spanish 
historically have destroyed, I know, I destroyed local cultures to promote Christian Christianity here, especially um, Catholic Christianity, and of course, to you know, promote their own language and culture. Rigoberta Menchu won um, the 1990 Nobel Peace Prize and she has also won the Gandhi Mandela Award. This is the latest one. The 2020 award has been given now. Please know that. Okay. It's named after both Gandhi and Nelson Mandela. This is Belize. You know, Belize um, uh, has a head of state whose name is King Charles III. You heard it right. King Charles III. And what's the capital of Belize? Belmopan. Belmopan. It's here. You see this, you know. Uh, Belmopan. This is in the center of the country. Belmopan. Okay. Guatemala. The capital is Guatemala City. Guatemala City. Fiji. Fiji is um, the capital is Suva. This is in uh, central. You could say it is in the northeast of uh, Australia in the Pacific Ocean. It's an island country where nearly 34 percent of the country's population is of Indian origin. Nicaragua, Nicaragua, Managua, that's the capital, Managua, Managua, Honduras, Tegucigalpa, that's the capital, Tegucigalpa, okay. According to a WTO report, World Trade Organization report, India ranked dash in anti-dumping duties, lowering average tariffs in 2023. Tariff is basically tax. In this case, customs tax. Customs tax or customs duty is a tax charged on exports and imports. Customs is only for only imposed uh, on exports and imposed, uh, imports. Now, anti-dumping. So, what's dumping? Dumping is, you know, a country X manufactures a particular commodity at a certain good and sells at, let's say, 40 rupees. And this is an example in China. A Chinese company manufactures, sells a particular commodity at 40 rupees in China, but exports it to India and sells it for 25 rupees. What is it doing? It is dumping. It is dumping. So, if there is an alternative and there is something, let's say in India, we have something that no same commodity that is sold at 30 rupees. What would you buy as a consumer? 25 rupee thing or 30 rupee thing? 25 rupee thing. Yeah. And this destroys local industries. Okay. So, to protect domestic industry, domestic you know economy, the government resorts to imposing anti-dumping duty. Okay, so a commodity that is sold at a lower price in a foreign market than it is than the price in the home market is called dumping. Okay, it's called dumping. That's the, the action is called dumping. So India imposed nearly, if I'm not wrong, nearly forty-five. Yeah, forty-five instances in forty-five cases, India imposed anti-dumping duties. We ranked second. The first rank belongs to the US and it imposed anti-dumping duties in 64 cases. 64 times it imposed anti-dumping duty mostly against uh, goods from uh, China. Goods from China. Okay. So top two. Uh, US 64, India 45. Yes. And what about the WTO? The World Trade Organization is headquartered in Geneva. Where is it? Geneva. And it's um, um, it's a global organization to promote trade, the free flow of trade between member states, 165, 64, 65 member states. And its um, director general is Ngoji Okonjo Iviela. Ngoji Okonjo Iviela. Okay. Yeah. Name the 
artificial intel intelligence chatbot in a uh, created recently by sebi for investor production what is sebi securities and exchange board of india what is it securities and exchange board of india this was started in 1998 sebi was started in 1998 but given statutory rights only in 1992 but started in 1998 its main job is to protect capital markets and capital markets is where companies raise capital stock you know share issues and everything and stock markets and stock markets that include stock exchanges that's the regulatory market the stock market capital market and all okay um, so it's a regulatory body of this and um, it's headquartered in mumbai sebi is headquartered in mumbai ladies and gentlemen it is headed by madhavi madhavi puri hyphenated butch okay madhavi puri butch and what is the full form of sebi uh, seva sebi s e sebi v is virtual assistant what is it virtual assistant so seva virtual assistant so did we come to the next the right question yes at the age of 16 who became um, the world's youngest and fastest female para swimmer para that's a great uh, thing achievement uh, para swimmer to swim solo across the english channel gri took 16 hours to do this my friends a little over 16 hours she swam the english channel so i have a photo for you here this is britain england and this is france okay this is called the english channel fair now ladies and gentlemen it starts here the english channel starts here from here till nearly you know you could say basically this is where it, it goes 550 km length the total length is 550 km from here till there okay the at its widest this is the widest part that widest part it's about 200 uh, i think it's 260 km wide or something but the narrowest point is this okay the narrowest point is this and this is 34 km this is where people swim okay and one more thing if you stand here you can see dover i'm not kidding you could just look up the photographs okay of this uh, on wikipedia also um one more thing you need to know is that um, there is an underground train here train channel uh, what to say uh, network this underground ne train network is called chunnal what is it chunnal channel plus tunnel is chunnal yes yes it's true okay so there are trains that move between european mainland and britain okay and you know what this is this area is the busiest shipping area in the world the busiest shipping area in the world okay lewis hamilton has won the formula 1 2024 belgian grand prix ladies and gentlemen lewis hamilton is a british f1 driver lewis hamilton is a british f1 driver and you should know that he is a if i'm not wrong six time or seven time six time world champion six time world championship i think seven times okay he has held uh, um michael schumacher yeah michael schumacher has seven so obviously he also has seven okay because he has tied with michael schumacher you must have heard of michael schumacher those of you don't know i'll spell the spelling here schumacher okay he was a world champion he had retired uh, because um, he met with an accident while skiing he fell on a rock uh, luckily he was wearing a helmet but you know till now till date we do not know uh, except for one report uh, you know one bulletin medical bulletin that had come from his family that he is now you know for a long time he was in a medically induced coma and now he is okay but we don't know anything beyond that okay he is recovering so this is louis louis hamilton he has 
got seven Formula One World Championships. And ladies and gentlemen, he holds the world record for the most wins. He has won 105 Formula, five, Formula One races. 105 Formula One races he has won. And in the top three, he has finished on 204 occasions, 201 or 204 occasions. A little, even if you say 200, you know, on 200 occasions, he has finished uh, what is called on the podium. That is, podium finishes they are called. He has had 200 podium finishes in the top three, basically. So that, you know, and he, what does he drive for? He drives for, where is it mentioned? Yes, look at this. He drives for Mercedes. He drives for Mercedes. You pronounce it as not Mercedes, Mercedes. Mercedes. And that symbol is called Tristar. What is it called? Tristar. Okay. This is a logo of Petronas. What is Petronas? Petronas is a National Petroleum Corporation of Malaysia. National Petroleum Corporation of Malaysia. This is a logo of a Monster Energy Drink. And you know, this is the logo of Puma. Puma logo is also called Jumping Cat. What is it called? Jumping Cat. Puma is a kind of a mountain lion, isn't it? It's a cat. So what is it doing? Jumping. That's why it's called Jumping Cat. Nothing more than that, my friends. They are easy to learn. Pretty easy to learn about. Okay. The current world champion, you know, and the last time Lewis Hamilton had won was in 2020. That was the last time he had won. And 21, 22, 23 world championships have been won by Max Westerpen. Max Westerpen. He belongs to Netherlands. He belongs to Netherlands. We will discuss his team later, which is also called the Red, which is called the Red Bull Racing Honda team. At the 2024 Paris Olympics, um, uh, Manu Bhakar, this is Manu, yeah, who has become the first athlete in the history of independent India to win two medals in a single Olympics edition. Manu Bhakar won um, uh, in uh, 10 meters air pistol, air pistol, and that's one branch. And this is single individual, the same thing, 10 meters mixed air pistol, mixed team, mixed team. She won it with Sarabjot Singh, Sarabjot Singh. So two branches she has received, she won, okay. Pusarla Venkara Sindhu, she lost in the, I think, pre quarters itself. So, so, yeah, I mean, people have worked extremely hard to get where they are, my friends. Uh, so, we can learn a lot from the 22 year old Manu. When I say 22 year old, I'm saying that at such a young age, people have worked extraordinarily hard to reach the, you know, the, the, the very top, my friends. This is what we should learn. See, that winning the branch is a culmination, is the end result of hard work. So, without having worked that hard, without having put in that practice, without having been so passionate, so disciplined, so, you know, determined, could she have come to this, this far? No. So, this is what we should learn from people like, you know, um, Manu. She would have failed so many times, but every time she failed, she learned. And this is what I always say, learn. I well to, a while ago, I told you, you could learn just about anything, my friends. Okay. Which conglomerate ventured into, uh, which conglomerate ventured into Indian jewelry market with the launch of its in-house brand, Indriya? This is KM Birla, Kumar Manglam Birla. Kumar Manglam Birla. Okay. Uh, we know jewelry brand, the Tata Group owns Titan. Sorry. It owns Titan and Titan is, uh, Titan, it's, I think, acting cranky. Never mind. I think we'll just um, leave it here. Okay. Titan, I think something went wrong. Titan is, uh, you know, um, the owner of Tanishk. You know, Tanishk, Tanishk contributes nearly 90% of the revenue of Titan company. Fair? It's called Titan company, actually. And uh, any other company that has a jewelry division? Yes, Reliance Group has a division. Uh, jewels, it's called Reliance Jewels. So, not much with it to discuss. 
which Indian university has been granted the distinguished special, special, I'm sorry, special consented status by the United Nations Eco Soccer. Um, United Nations Economic and Social Council. Economic and Social Council. KIIT is a Bhubaneswar based, you know, university, which is, um, whose full name is Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology. Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology. This is, uh, you know, it's it's uh, received a special honor here. And uh, what does ECOSOC do? Look at this is what ECOSOC does. A central platform for fostering debate and innovative thinking, forging consensus on ways forward and coordinating the efforts to achieve internationally agreed goals. So between member states, between member states. Okay. This is Banaras Hindu University and IIC is Indian Institute of Science. Okay, uh, Swapnil Kusale, nice. Swapnil Kusale has won the, you know, he won India's, um, he won the bronze medal and he won it in the 50 meter air rifle, basically. 50 meters air rifle. Please know this. 50 meters. He is also a shooter and, you know, he, he, um, he was a ticket collector with the railways and later he, now he is his officer on special duty at uh, Mumbai, I think, at Mumbai. Office on special duties, uh, Indian Railways. So he is a member of uh, the Indian Railways. Extreme hard work, my friends. If you read his story, you will be wonderstruck at the amount of hardships people have, people, people face. But it all pays off when you work, when you do very well. Okay. Read. Hailing startup Rapido has entered the Unicorn Club. Unicorn Club is um, where which has a valuation of one billion dollars, which is eight thousand three hundred crores today at today's value. Eight thousand three hundred crores. So, you know who are the founders? Arvind Sanka, Pawan Guntupalli, S R Rishikesh. Three friends started Rapido, and Rapido is rapidly you know is ca catching up with. It's competitors like Uber and uh, what is that, um, Ola and all that. It's doing quite well, actually. To improve solid waste management and sanitation in 100 cities, the central government, you signed a $200 million loan deal with the Asian Development Bank. The Asian Development Bank is headquartered in Manila. It's headquartered in Manila and it's headed by a man called, let's see if it's, yeah, it's working, Masat Sugu. Asakawa, Asakawa, Masatsugu Asakawa of Japan, of Japan, Masatsugu Asakawa. The rest of the choices you would know, but let me bring in one choice here. The new development bank is headquartered in Beijing, oh sorry, Shanghai. It's headquartered in Shanghai and it is uh, headed by the former Brazilian president Dilma Rousseff. Dilma Rousseff. Dilma Rousseff. Okay. Just to, uh, I think that should be fine, my friends. Yeah. Who is the author of India at 100? Envisioning. India at 100 is 1947 to 2014. So, 2014. Envisioning tomorrow's economic powerhouse. Krishnamurti Subramaniam. He at one time became the youngest Chief Economic Advisor to the Government of India. Then can you believe that? He was just about 45, 47 when he became the Chief Economic Advisor to the Government of India. Okay. Um, he, Rajan um, is also a former Chief Economic Advisor. He is the, he's a professor, in fact, um, at Booth School of Business, um, Chicago University. And Ra Raghuram Rajan is author of books like Fault Lines. There is a long title. Just this will help. Fault lines. The full title is How Hidden Fractures Threaten the Global Economy. I have all the books of Rajan, so I can actually give you the names. But this is enough. Fault lines. Subramaniam Jay Shankar, our Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, is author of books like Why Bharat Matters. Why Bharat Matters. This is enough. Chal. From here, let's go. This is the ex-RBI governor, Yaga Venugopal Reddy. He is also an author. 
but uh, let's not discuss uh, too much stuff here okay the new president of the united nations economic and social council is robert ray robert ray what about the choices we mentioned audrey azule the secretary general of unesco tedros is the director general of world health organization filippo grandi is um, sec UNHCR, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Catherine Russell, she is the head of UNICEF, United Nations Children's Fund, United Nations Children's Fund, okay, so from here, let's go to the next one, what is India's rank in travel and tourism in development index 2024 published by the World Economic Forum? Uh, our rank is 39. What are the top three countries? Top three countries, United States is world number one. Two is Spain. And uh, third country, third rank country is Japan. Japan. India's rank is 39. And the last rank is that of Mali. Who would go to Mali? I wonder basically why they did even consider Mali. It's a country full of terrorism, full of violence. Yeah, it's in central uh, um, central North Africa. Okay, so World Economic Forum is headquartered in a place called Colony. It's headquartered in Colony, Switzerland. Extra stuff here, and it's headed by a man called Klaus Schwab. He's also the founder, Klaus Schwab. Okay. Let's look at. Thank you for being here. Please do subscribe to our you know, social media handles on Insta, on you know um, what we say uh, YouTube, and uh, of course um, you know um, Facebook. Please make sure you stay curious and learn a lot of th good things. And if you have something to share with us, please write to us at info at timeforeducation.com. Thank you for being here. Stay curious.